ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。こんにちは、みなさん。Welcome back.This is Osaga g o l here, coming back from my small hiatus.And today, I'm gonna be reviewing an anime from a couple of years back, which goes by the name of Arslan Senki. In English, The Heroic Legend of Arslan. And basically, it's a two season anime. The first season of 25 episodes came out back in 2015, followed by the second season, which was eight episodes back in 2016. And basically, this is based on a very long running novel series which started back in 86 and wrapped it up its 16th novel run in end of 2017. And there was another anime OVA done in the 90s, which was eight episodes. It has a very different type of style compared to this one. It was more doing、uh, the style of the 90s and with these taller body types and also kind of like imitating Seinen style along with the kind of The style that they had on the cover of the novels. And back in 2013, the creator of Full Metal Alchemist and Silver Spoon, Hiromu Arakawa, basically did a manga version of the novels, which this anime is basically based on, which explains the similarities of the style between Arslan Sengi and the Full Metal Alchemist. So, the first thing I want to talk about here is the idea of self plagiarism, which makes me a very big critique of Hiromu in general. When we look at her other mangas, The Hero's Tale, or Full Metal Alchemist, or Silver Spoon, and now Arslan Senki, she is using the same archetype of models and characters. Over and over again. The characters look very similar across the series, and it's like rehashing the same thing over and over again. This is Toriyama like circulating the Goku's body type over and over again the Dark Goku, Bardock, and you know what I'm talking about here. And this is something that I don't generally like, and this is why I've been always a very big critique of Full Metal Alchemist and a lot of our other works because she's not really doing a lot of new stuff. And we can also see that Silver Spoon and And also, Hero's Tale were not these like magnificent, amazing things, which kind of like contributes to the, my narrative that Full Metal Alchemist was just a bit of a fluke of sorts. And Arslan Sengi, though, is better than Silver Spoon, but that has a lot to do with the story rather than the actual style that,、uh, you know,、uh, Hiromu has gone to. And there's differences between the novel and the OVA and this new adaptation. And how much the anime actually covers the novels. I don't know. I haven't seen the original anime or I haven't read the novel. So if there's an expert in the comment section, ask him or go to their subreddit. There's、uh, pretty good explanations of the whole thing and the narratives. And there are a lot of key differences between them, but it's mostly the same. So let's kind of like finally break down what the anime is about now that we have done all those clarifications in the beginning. So, this takes place in pre Muslim era. It is kind of like based on loosely on Persian、uh, folklore or tales, which are going back to the, well, basically Sumerian ages. Well, maybe not that far. The year in the anime is. 320 and Islam came around actually year 1000 or year 900, end of 900, I think. So I think there is a lot of similarities that you can see with the Middle Eastern area. You have the nomadic tribes and you have these Arabs and then you have kind of like、uh, Jews and you know, Semitic people in general. And it's, it's kind of like portraying a lot of that and you don't see like. There's no snow in this anime or jungles and stuff like that. It is a very, you know, the geography of the series takes place in a very Middle Eastern setting and has a lot of Middle Eastern influences. And that is kind of nice and refreshing a lot of times. And in its heart, it is.、Um, War anime. It is a story about war. It's a story about politics, morality, and you know, bloodlines, especially who is the rightful king, and these all types of conspiracies. I mean, it's not exactly Game of Thrones, but it has a lot of similarities to it. And basically,、um, the kingdom of Pars, which Pars comes from the name Persia, but it's sometimes a lot of the bad dub、uh, the subbing teams basically named it Persia, but it's Pars, not Persia. So,、uh, the king, king of Pars is called Andagoras III, and his son is basically. 
uh, Arslan, who looks like, by the way, exactly like Edward from Full Metal Alchemist, just colored hair. Almost similar type of hairstyle, and also facial features are very similar. It is a bit taller than Edward, so you won't be he uh, hearing any bean sprout jokes, basically. But, um... And he is going, he's a very young child, and he's going to war the first time with his father. They're at war with this neighboring empire called Lusitania. And, well, shit goes down, and a lot of bad things happen. And I'm not going to go into very details of what happens exactly, but uh, Arslan has to go into exile, basically, flee from his homeland. And he will meet different type of people in his journey who will become his companions, and he will be convincing through his personality and fairness, uh, a lot of people who will become devoted to him. And it's a story about, you know, there's a lot of elements of slavery, religious solitary, uh, moral questions, and, uh, you know, sibling rivalries, and a lot of different types of uh, political themes basically are portrayed here. It makes cases for slavery. I mean, people who don't understand, at one point in time, slavery was the moral action to do. It was morally good to slay people instead of kill them. As in also mentioned in the anime, some people basically um, you had a better life because they were slaves. Uh, otherwise, they might have, you know, ended up... And obviously, in the modern context, given the economy and everything, slavery doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, back in the day, it did. Because even if we talk about the American slavery of blacks, like, you know, if the, those slaves wouldn't taken into America, some of them probably had you know, higher life expectancy when they were slaves under America than they were in Africa. But obviously, I'm not going to trigger all of my subscriber base by talking about these things. So let's stop the slavery discussion there. Um, in terms of the story, I think it's pretty good. Um, well, it's pretty good. Okay, let's say it's okay. And the characters are... you kind of, They kind of grow up on you slowly, but I wasn't, like, particularly invested in any of them or really cared for them. I didn't have particularly any favorites or so. It wasn't really able to connect me, me on a very high level. I think in, even in Full Metal Alchemist, which I'm not a very big fan of, I was able to like certain characters in it and kind of, like, build up... Uh, you know, emotional connection. That's something that you don't... I didn't create in Arslan Senki. I just kind of, you know, I felt it was a very middle of pack, you know, the sort of a war fantasy type of an anime. It doesn't really have a lot of magic or other type of fantasy elements. There's no dragons. I mean, there is magic, kind of very mild, and it's not really explored that much in the anime. There's kind of a couple of hints about legacies, and then there's these people who can, like, teleport around. Like, what the fuck these guys are doing? It seems pretty broken. And uh, one of the problems of the anime also is that there's a giant cliffhanger in the end of second season. I mean, this is a story that is supposed to go like probably six, seven seasons at least, I, I think. And f for the most part, I, I think that there's not going to be a third season. I, I think it's very unlikely right now. Lead-in films who were, you know, basically the one that was behind the first and the second season uh, has been working on a lot of other projects like Terraformers and Killer Bites. And I, I just not really sure if season three is going to happen. But I mean, I guess it was relatively big because they did create a Musou game out of it also, and I think it was released on PS3 or PS4 even. I can't remember right now, but I mean, the game looked actually pretty decent. I mean, I could play it. But what I'm trying to say here is that it wasn't probably meeting the expectations and meeting the hype it could have been. What things could have been better? Um, to be honest, like even though the OVA series doesn't have a particularly amazing art style, like, and it's pretty kind of sloppy for its time, and there's a lot more better 90s anime out there with a better style, but I would have preferred to have a more, more seinen type of a style. I don't necessarily like Hiromu's style too much in this type of an anime, which is kind of like more mature and stuff like that. So it's better to have a bit more... Uh, so to speak, a more sane and tabo style with like a more edgier shows. That's my personal preference. And I also think like the OSD, I like the first opening and ending song. The, you know, when you're doing these sort of a, like um, big fantasy shows or whatever, it's Lord of the Rings or Narnia or even Berserk, you need to have these like very ambitious orchestral tracks. And I felt like everything here was, you know, middle of the back at best, like... 
I keep saying this over and over again, but the music is there to amplify the motions, amplify the scene, and make it more like dramatic. And it failed to do that because the OST was very mild. You know, it was it really lacked that ambiose. I, I thought that this this could have been a lot more. Um, orchestral i mean a lot more ambitious and like um you know what i'm saying trying to say here basically but yeah uh, in terms of the animation i think it's pretty good sometimes during the war scenes there were a lot of treaty horses treaty elephants and treaty units and i i felt like you know it was well done i didn't look it, for me i'm not bitching about the treaty all the time and i think they really only use 3d mostly on these war scenes everywhere else it was basically 2d and it makes a lot more sense to have these giant fighting scenes done in 3d it looks a bit more impressive and a lot more dynamic when they're portraying these shots where there's million people fighting each other in 3d that's just much more easier to done and easier to done easier and simpler to done and you know i don't think it was a big problem with the anime and i don't think that is the main reason why it kind of got low grades but obviously there's people who literally bitch about every single shot of 3d animation but um i mean it's it's a very middle of the pack anime for me i think a lot of the minus points come from the very fact that you know your hiromu is using the same character archetypes over and over again in his anime and she's not really innovating and creating new types and i didn't see that in this anime everything that i saw every character looked similar to something that she had created in or, or of her past mangas and the second thing is, as the OST could have been better, it just it just didn't hit me. Maybe it's the story itself, maybe the novels are better. I also have to watch the OVA, I mean, let's see how good that is. But I think it could have been a lot more cinematic, it could have been a lot more, you know, high-end fantasy and high-end fantasy feels, but it felt like kind of mild to me, to be honest. And the fights were in particular exciting because there's no hard science to it or there wasn't like these great strategy elements that they showcased. It was kind of like, oh, you used, you know, horses to back and then come back again. Like, what is this strategy? Like, it seemed, uh, you know, it kind of lacked that complexity that I was maybe looking on on it. And that is pretty much my rundown, but I still recommend watching it, though. But it's like, if you're really having problems with these massive cliffhangers, well, then it's maybe not worth watching, because it doesn't wrap it up. And I wonder, actually, if there's some type of, um, you know, Berserk Redux out of this one, which kind of combines the material of the original OVA, which I'm probably going to be reviewing as well. I want to have a bit more insight into this anime and then i can basically tell which one was better which one did it better but that is pretty much my rundown of arslan senki i will still watch a season three if they ever manage to pull it out i don't know how far the manga is but i think it probably wrapping up at some point but thanks for watching subscribe to the channel i see you on the next video cheers